The uh, Alaska salmon programs worked here in southwest Alaska, particularly in Bristol Bay since the 1940s, the late 1940s. And throughout the history of our program, our main interest has really been in understanding uh, how these watersheds produce salmon, Pacific salmon like sockeye and coho salmon that uh, both represent important or support important fisheries uh, as they come back to the rivers of Bristol Bay, but also how those species respond to changes in climate, and changes in, the, in these watersheds. Over the course of a typical field season, we measure the growth of juvenile salmon, the uh, abundance and the spatial distributions of the spawning salmon, the adult salmon. So we count where the fish are spawning over hundreds of kilometers of streams. We are here in Teal Creek in Lake Nurka in southwest Alaska, 196, rainbow. And each stream here responds differently to the changing climate. And that change alters how coho salmon grow. And we are measuring length and weight of coho in order to observe the fish response to each individual stream's observed change with climate. And coho salmon are really interesting because they are born in freshwater streams. And while they're in freshwater streams, they take one to two years to grow, and then they enter the marine environment. They leave for the ocean. And once they're in the ocean, they stay for about 18 months and continue to put on all the mass before they come back into the streams, lay their eggs, die, and let the net gener next generation come forward. We uh, cut their heads open and uh, once they've died and pull out their otoliths, which we use to age them. And the ages of those fish is an interesting part of their ecology because it tells us how much time they spent in the lakes and also how much time they spent in the ocean before returning to spawn. Typically sockeye salmon spend one, two or three years in the ocean. And one of the interesting things we're seeing this year is that a really high proportion of the male salmon that are coming back have only spent one growing season in the ocean. We call those jacks, and they're just sockeye that are maybe barely a foot long. And the reason they're interesting is they tell us about how many fish are coming back next year. Because the siblings of those jacks will come back after two years in the ocean, so we'll see them next year. So typically we use jacks as a way to predict how many two-year-old fish are coming back next year, and how many three ocean fish come back the, the year after that. So for reasons we don't yet understand, this year um, there are lots of jacks in all the spawning locations suggesting that uh, a year ago when they headed to the ocean as smolts, they had really high survival rates. One of the luxuries uh, the current generation of researchers has is 70 plus years of data uh, where we've monitored how things like stream temperatures and lake temperatures have responded to climate change. But we also see how the animals and other organisms that live in these systems have responded to climate change. And this part of Alaska, like the rest of the world, has uh, shown very pronounced warming trends with ongoing climate change. And we're in this unique position where we can actually quantify how the fishes in this case have responded to that warming climate. And what we see that's a bit unexpected to some is that climate change has actually increased how productive these ecosystems are. In the last 50 years, the number of salmon returning to these watersheds is about double of the couple decades before that. And in the last decade, we've seen numbers of salmon return to these rivers that simply could not have been anticipated 50 years ago. And we're pretty sure that's a positive response to ongoing climate change. Of course, one of the things that motivates our current research is asking, well, how much more warming can these watersheds and the nearshore ocean endure before their productivity starts declining? And so far, we haven't seen that tipping point yet. It's probably lurking out there somewhere. But in the recent past, warming climates have definitely benefited salmon in, in Western Alaska. And our long-term data allow us to, to quantify what this, the size of that response is.